a woman working tirelessly for decades to unify her community. A group inspiring children and bridging the gaps in their lives. Volunteers tearing down and building up, acting to bust blight. All nominated by you to receive an inaugural Detroit 2020 Award. Now, join us as we honor those making a profound difference in our community as we present the Detroit 2020 Awards. Hello, we'd like to welcome you to the inaugural Detroit 2020 Awards. We are so excited to have you here with us at Broadcast House. I'm Stephen Clark. And I'm Carolyn Clifford. You all look beautiful, and we're so happy you are here today. And I'm Dave Llewellyn, and I uh, echo those statements. Welcome to each and every one of you. And we do want to make a quick announcement because Dave is actually the brand new member of the Detroit 2020 team, so we're so happy to have you. And I'm thrilled to be part of this. Today we're honoring the people and the organizations who are making a profound difference in our community. These people who are living up to the Detroit 2020 motto, which I wear on my wrist 24-7, unify, inspire, and act. And we want you to know all of the winners and finalists who are here today in this room were nominated by our viewers, which is a wonderful thing. We received nearly 300 nominations for the Detroit 2020 Awards. How about that? Right now, we'd like to, to introduce you to the engine who drives Detroit 2020. He's our vice president and general manager of WXYZ, Ed Fernandez. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Stephen, Carolyn, and Dave. Uh, we are incredibly excited to have you here today at Broadcast House. It's a very, very special day in the evolution of Detroit 2020. Uh, Detroit 2020's goal is to make Detroit a better place to live work and raise a family. And when I say Detroit, I mean all of Southeast Michigan. We are all one Detroit. And that's the one thing we have to make sure we remember. So welcome. We're so glad you're here. Enjoy today's presentation. And I'll turn it back to our hosts. We're going to begin with the Unify Award, honoring the person or organization that worked to bring the community and people together in 2011. The finalists for the Unify Award were Bishop Adolphus Cast of Life Application Ministries in Warren. The other finalists for the Unify Award, Terry Shaw of the CEM Business Association. Now here's a story about the winner of the inaugural Detroit 2020 Unify Award, Tony McElwain. Take a look. In the Ravendale community on Detroit's east side, neighbors look out for each other in good times and bad. And so when there was an explosion at Kena Yeldell Harrison's house on Maiden Street, she knew she wouldn't have to suffer through this alone. All my neighbors came to help me. One of the first on the scene was Ravendale's biggest champion, Tony McElwain. We just call her and she'd be right there. Tony has been there for the residents of Wade Street since 1988. Soon after she moved in, she complimented one of the neighbors on a beautiful flower bed. I said to herself, hi, my name is Tony Backaway. I said, those are some pretty flowers. And she looked at me, she said, lady, didn't nobody ask you your name? Right then, Tony decided to change attitudes in her neighborhood. She made up her mind to start a block club. And everyone started noticing this one little block, how it transformed from a, de from a deteriorating block to a a more livable block. Soon residents on nearby streets began to ask Tony for help with their blocks. I have organized 32 block clubs. She has unified the 4,000 people in the area. How did Tony become such a unifying force? That part of her story begins with a rat in a dumpster. Tony was in her 20s. She had four children and a husband who was physically abusive. I was shot once in the head. And I ended up living on the streets of Detroit. There was a grocery store that occasionally gave her food for the kids. One day this store was closed. And I remember walking around to the alley looking in a dumpster for food. A rat ran out and scampered down the alley. It had gotten to the food first. And I remember praying to God, if you just open up one door for me, I will give back the rest of my life. That was the start. Tony began to turn her life around. And I moved into this neighborhood. I said, that's where I could help make the change. It, 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 that's where I could give back. 
This welcoming community center is the heart of the Ravendale community. You can think of it as Tony's home because it's where she has put out the welcome mat. When people walk in this door with their shoulders slumped because they, they're down and out, you know, if they leave out of here just a little, standing up just a little straighter, feeling good about coming here and that they're really going to get some help. And the help comes in many forms. For instance, this computer class that helps residents update their skills. There's a resale shop. Everyone that's here is from this community. There's a senior program during the day and an after school program for kids. In the summer, we have over 200 youth that we serve. For years, she has been at the forefront of neighborhood cleanup efforts. When tensions ran high between store owners and residents, Tony brought the two sides together and helped develop a code of conduct for each. Her contributions have not gone unnoticed. Everyone from presidents to residents have recognized her efforts. Tony will continue to work for her community because she has a promise to keep. It's my life. And it's a life that uh, I feel that I have to keep going until I can't go anymore. She gives me great hope, great hope. She gives us all great hope, huh? Unifying Detroit, and that's what this award is really all about. And this is our, our very first one for you, Tony. Hold that for me. Hold that. Of course, this is the winner of the inaugural Detroit 2020 Unify Award, Tony McElwain of the Ravendale community. She's crying, and we're crying right along with her. <laughs> our hearts are feeling you. You do so much good in our community. Tony, along with the award, we do have a check for you. From the Scripps Howard Foundation, she didn't know she was getting this, for $7,000 to further your efforts in the Ravendale community and to improve your community. We love you. Thank you. And I have to acknowledge the people at my table because if it wasn't for them believing in what we do in that community, uh, I can't thank them enough, the volunteers, the people that come in all the time. But I like to end it with just this poem I wrote about neighborhoods years ago, and it goes, neighbors, neighbors, it is time to shout and explain what dignity is all about. See, we must feel good about where we live before we can even begin to give. Trash tires are everywhere. Must inner city neighborhoods be in despair? Street lights are out, there are potholes too. Abandoned homes and buildings, just to name a few. Now when friends and relatives come to visit, see we also want to feel good. To be able to point and proudly say, look, that's my neighborhood. There are those of us who are living right and we really don't want to move. See, we choose to live in our city. We just want to see our neighborhoods improve. Of course, there's great developments. Casino, the Tiger Stadium is new. But what about our neighborhood? Don't we deserve an uplift too? So listen, top officials, please. Don't you hear our cry? Our neighborhoods, they need attention because they're about to die. So residents, you have the right. Let them know that you have pride. You go to work and you pay your taxes. Stand up and don't be denied. Thank you. The Inspire Award honors the person or organization that worked to motivate the community in 2011. The finalists for the Inspire Award were Joseph Savali of Safe Haven for Kids of Michigan. The other finalists for the Inspire Award, Ziggy Gonzalez of the Clark Park Coalition. And now here's the story of the winner of the inaugural Detroit 2020 Inspire Award, The Front Porch. 
Just about any afternoon when the weather is good and a few when it isn't, you'll find children and adults on the front porch of Gene Vortkamp's house. I wish that more people would spend time on their porch with like neighborhood kids. Jean grew up in this house and spent much of her childhood on the porch. I lived outside. Several years ago, Jean left the neighborhood and traveled overseas to study in Prague. When she came back, she looked at Detroit in a whole different way. As far as like um, gun shots and things like that uh, were things I just kind of accepted. And then when I came back and I hadn't lived with that, for some months. It was very strange to me that anybody should accept that as normal or okay. Especially children. So Jean began to invite kids to hang out on her front porch, and she made sure it was a safe and nurturing place for them to be. Probably like at any one time, probably you'll see like five to 10 kids. And adults began to get involved. Jean's sister, Mary Jo, is on the board of the front porch. Mostly it's the kids telling each other and coming on by or seeing what's happening and coming on by. I think of it as like an activity area for self, for for us to do just normal things and experience new things in life. There's a traffic light system at the front porch. Green means it's okay to knock. Yellow means only knock if you need help with homework. Red means not now. While Jean's front porch is the center of many of the activities, it isn't the only place where front porch okay. activities take place. It's the right sound no. that it makes. But Here at the right Wayne sound. Elementary, the front porch provides tutors for students who could benefit from a little extra attention. She's here Monday through Friday, and she has anywhere from three to 15 tutors who come in with her. Okay, can you send it out? The tutors volunteer both during and after school. The kids obviously enjoy the sessions. Because it's fun, we get to go outside and we get to, we get to do our homework and do everything. And they have benefited. They help us read, spell, and they help us get answers right. Whether at school or on the porch, the program is working and the kids are inspired. It's very important because she's very thoughtful to help us with all these kids. I'm sure she does it every day. <laughs> So you already have a cup of sugar in there, so what do you need to go up to on here? Jean and her crew okay, just think of themselves as good neighbors. You just got to go in there and just listen and give people what they what they say they need, because most people, even children, know what they need and will ask for it if you're listening. And on the front porch, there's always someone to listen. And Gene, along with the award, we have a check for you as well from the Scripps Howard Foundation for $7,000 to further your efforts with the front porch to improve your community. Congratulations. Thank you. You know, we've been doing it for like 14 years. And these last few years have been very hard because we have seen <clears throat> almost a cruelty toward children as far as social service programs go. And I see people nodding because you know that these last few years have been hard. We have kids that have holes in their clothes all the time. We have parents that can't afford uniforms. And sometimes they can't even afford to wash their kids' clothes because of the way that things have been going in Detroit. And so I think it's time for everyone in the metro area to embrace the children of Detroit and preserve childhood in Detroit. And I'm just hoping that as a community, we can come together to help give the help that parents are asking for in Detroit to preserve childhood. Thank you. The Act Award honors the individuals or organizations who have made a demonstrable impact and made a difference in 2011. The finalists for the Act Award are Goya Inc., a mobile soup kitchen and food redistribution organization. The other finalists for the Act Awards today, Get a Life Inc. Get a Life Inc. provides community outreach services for families and individuals, including care packages, light yard maintenance, and workshops to help improve the quality of life 
for those in need. Now, here's a story near and dear to my heart. The winner of our inaugural Detroit 2020 Act Award, the Motor City Blightbusters. These seven houses make up one side of the 21,600 block of Santa Clara. They're abandoned, they're dangerous, and they are about to be history. Uh, it's our goal to remove all of this negative energy, all seven of these abandoned homes between now and the end of the year. And in spring of 2013, we'll be planning uh, what, we, what will be known as Farm City. This is just the latest project for John George and the Blightbusters. It's an effort that was started a quarter century ago when an abandoned house on John's block was turned into a crack house. One Friday night, it got out of hand. And the following morning, I went to the hardware store and I bought nails and paint and I boarded up the house. I cut the grass. A couple neighbors joined me. At the end of the day, the house was secure. When the drug dealers came back, they couldn't get in and they left. And that's how the whole effort started about 24, 25 years ago. All right, okay, here we go. John chose to act, not just stand by. And he's remained an active force in the community. Since then, 10,000 people have volunteered with Motor City Blightbusters. On one recent day, more than 200 Starbucks employees from all over the Midwest got their hands dirty, prepping the Santa Clara 7 for deconstruction. Company officials researched many volunteer opportunities and selected Blightbusters. John George and his team here at Motor City Blightbusters are doing the work that needs to be done in the city of Detroit. Reclaiming property, educating children, providing them with opportunities to learn about the art, painting murals. That work is so incredibly important to this city as we try to bring Detroit back to the prominence that it once was. With 24 years under its belt, Motor City Blightbusters is now attracting the children of its original volunteers. And Generation Y has its own John George. I've been doing this since I was a you know, little kid. Members of John Jr.'s generation like the fact that buildings aren't just torn down, they're recycled. We take the materials, we recycle all the metal, we take pieces of the wood that can be saved, we try to sell that for a profit to help fund what we do. Blightbusters doesn't just get people to sign up, it also gets them to sign checks. We have spent about $20 million in this community over the last 24, 25 years, and we're going to continue. You can see that investment along this block of Losser near Grand River. The coffee shop, the artist's village, are part of the Blightbuster legacy. So is Sweet Potato Sensations. We also help Matt clean out the old uh, Comerica Bank and turn it into Detroit Tire and Wheel. Matt Ward saw the potential in this old bank building, but it had been empty for years, and it was in pretty rough shape. Well, there were some homeless people staying here, things like that. Blightbusters rounded up people to give Matt a hand. They worked it for weeks, you know, and helping me doing a lot of the tear out, which saved me a lot of money that I can actually put back into the building. Now this corner on Grand River is one of the more attractive parts of the neighborhood. You know, our goal is to save the world, and we're starting with Detroit. And it's a group effort with everyone talking to participate. You invite everyone to participate, everybody gives, and everybody gets. That's the magic of life. And this, this might help you out a little bit right here, $7,000. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. I certainly want to thank uh, Channel 7 and everyone from Detroit 2020 for uh, honoring us with this, uh, this award. This is our 24th year of bringing people together from the city and the suburbs in an effort to recreate Detroit, to, to stabilize it, to revitalize it, to beautify it. We want to create as many homeowners and business owners as possible, an opportunity for our children. Uh, we're going to continue uh, to bring people together uh, in this effort to remake Detroit. Uh, the Farm City Project, um, thanks again to Starbucks and others, uh, will span over a city block. And everything that uh, is grown there will be given uh, to the kids and to the neighbors in our community. We're so pleased, so excited, a uh, little tired, a little dirty, a little dusty, but we're never going to give up. Uh, we're going to continue again uh, to bring people together, to uh, stabilize Detroit, to revitalize it, to re recreate it, and to beautify it. God bless you, and thank you so much.
Well, we all know that Detroit has long been known for great music, right? And we are happy to say that that trend continues. We have just premiered a new music video for a song that has become the Detroit 2020 anthem. We first heard it a few months back when the rock band Rock Nation sent us a copy. Well, we loved the music and the message especially. So we invited them to work with us to make a video that would inspire all of us. It would help all of us to unify, inspire, and act. Take a look at the video. Let's get it together and make a change. It's Michigan weather. It's good to finally see my people sticking together. Motown City need change. I'ma bring that spread peace around the deep from here to where you hang at. It's about time that we help out the community. Leave behind the violence and replace it with some unity. The youth need role models, sisters and brothers. Let's turn it all around, cause all we got is each other. Let's get it together. Yeah, yeah. Wow, what a day. What'd you think? Um, I'd like to thank all of you for coming to the inaugural Detroit 2020 Awards. Um, we often like the, you know, the technical term for Detroit 2020. It's a regional impact, uh, decade long, uh, yeah, blah, blah, blah commitment. The truth is, it's, we like to call it, though, a higher calling. And it's so, we're so lucky that all these organizations have already heard the call and are already doing what they can to make this the greatest region in the country, a place we all love and cherish and are passionate about. So thank you so much. Let's turn Detroit around. So congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you for unifying, inspiring, and acting, and uh, have a great afternoon. Thanks so much, everybody.